Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have your afternoon update on what's going on with Ian. And you can see how big and broad this system is just starting to get. It's just starting to intensify. Right now, it is at 92 miles per hour winds, and it is predicted to still be a Cat 3 before Cuba and maintain a high-end Cat 4 and downgrade quickly because of the shear and the dryer that's getting involved. You can also see that the watches and warnings have changed. So now you have Tropical Storm Watch all along the east side of Florida. You have Tropical Storm Warnings on what was a Tropical Storm Watch on the west side. What was a Hurricane Watch is now a Hurricane Warning. And up here by Cedar Key, you have Hurricane Watch. This is all about time. So many hours away, they give you a tropical storm watch. And then as that event gets closer, they turn them into warnings. Also I have some links in the description for you to help you out. Make sure you use the links in the description. And what happens with this storm is it all depends on what it does on Cuba. When it comes off of Cuba, if it waddles to the west, then it's going to go a little bit further to the west. If it wobbles to the east, it's going to take that sharp turn to the east. I'm showing that it's still going to be weakened down by sheer and dry air right before landfall, just going fast and then hitting the brakes. But here's the latest update, still expected to rapid intensify, be a major hurricane right before 2 p.m. on Thursday and turn into a hurricane, then a tropical storm and then a tropical depression for Carolinas and Georgia. But you can see all the watches and warnings this page is in the description for you as well. There has been updated to the storm surge expected. So now you have one to three feet expected over here by Indian Pass, two to four feet over here by Suwannee River, also a five to eight feet that has stretched out from Tampa. Tampa now has the five to 10 feet that was earlier, but now it's stretching out five to eight feet as it goes around by Cedar Keys. And you also are expecting two to four feet storm surge for portions of Georgia as well as northern Florida as that onshore flooding from this spinning around comes around and gives y'all all that heavy rainfall. So remember this link is in the description for you as well so you can go see the inundation of it but you can see the little red marks every now and then and this is where they're going to get expected up to 10 feet storm surge and this is where a lot of people live. The population of Tampa has grown significantly just in the last 50 years. But a lot of 10 foot storm surge is expected, especially around the edges of the bay. So make sure you grab this, make sure you zoom into your area and see exactly what you are expected to have. I'm showing there's still some potential impacts also for Southern Florida where you can get 10 foot storm surge also by Southern Florida. So I've always showed that Sarasota, Port Charlotte, Tampa, y'all all, all going to be in the area for all this storm surge. It's just going to sit there and wind for hours, shoving all this on your landfall. They also updated a rainfall. They did a five-day. Usually they do a three-day. They did a five-day. So what you have is in the dark green, also for the Bahamas, two to four inches. Light green is one to two inches. This yellow is four to six inches, also up here in the north. And six to eight inches for all of this orange, except for this area right here. I will explain. They have some dry air getting into the storm, and it is a big dry air pocket that's going to be dragging in, stopping you from getting all that rainfall as everyone else is getting. You're still getting a lot. You're just not getting a 6 to 10. And you can see this from the latest run from the Euro, the 12Z, that as that system comes in, that you start getting some dry air that wraps around the storm, gets inside of the storm, stops it from forming a closed low. It keeps it broken apart, really gets inside of it as it gets closer towards Florida weakens the storm, stops it from doing any kind of serious damage. At the same time, you still have all this dry air that is wrapping around, stopping you from getting any precipitation as it comes forward. Plus now 10 to 15 inches expected right here for northern Florida, right by Jacksonville, from all that onshore flooding from this system, as well as over here around the Big Bend area by Cedar Keys, 10 to 15 inches spread all the way around with the heaviest still being in the Gulf. But now they have it to where it goes north. You have Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Y'all all expected to get two to four inches of rainfall, plus up here another one to two inches. So remember this link is in the description for you to use 
please click on it and go see what your rainfall totals are. I'll also put this link in the description for all y'all and let you know all the schools and all the closings so you know exactly what to expect. So if all you that do have kids or if you are in school and you wonder if you have school, go to this link and it'll let you know if your school is closed. Also have this for you as well. This is evacuation zones from floridadisaster.org. This is the best way to know if your zone is recommended or mandatory evacuations because there will be a lot of flooding still showing that flooding is going to be the main event of this storm so this is what the storm is fighting against so it's just streamlined winds when it comes off of cuba you can see that the winds are trying to push this system to the west it's trying to do a western wobble at the same time you have this cold front coming in from the west and it's shearing this system from west to east with some westerly winds as it pushes further up to the north. You can see the winds right here with the front trying to really wobble this system, push it back to the east. At the same time, it is getting sheared greatly. But as it comes forward, you can see that the winds are pushing from south to north, pushing this forward while it's getting hit from the west, pushing it to the east quickly diminishes because it's dealing with winds coming from the north from the south so it is wind direction change with height it is vertical wind shear and it makes it stall it weakens the system then it gets dry air in it weakens it even more and then eventually does a little northern to a northwestern of a little bit of a wobble after that on your 10 meter winds you have winds coming from the north down from the south this big high pressure circling over here is spinning winds around so on the ground level you have them coming from north to south on your upper level you have them coming from south to north so with those two going at each other it's just a matter of time before finally it does a stall and just sits there and spins because of the two winds fighting each other spins for a long time at the same time, it gets this dry air involved in this system, weakens it down while it's getting sheared off to the east, while it's getting stalled by two different winds, slowing it down, letting this dry air get all up in the core and weakening it down, coming in really fast, really strong, but hitting the brakes at the last second. But you can see the outcome when you look at the satellite view. So it comes off of Cuba, it tries to intensify, it gets a nice center right there, but now it's getting hit with two different winds. It's getting hit with all this shear pushing everything to the east as it tries to formulate AI. And you can see it does not get a good center. It gets one for a moment. That's when it's predicted to be a Cat 3, but it don't last long. It gets all messed up from the shear, from the dry air, and it can't even hold a center too good. It maintains its strength because it is warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico, but it has a big battle with the winds. But you can also see the track changes. So with everything going on with that system, they still have it going up to a Cat 2. So it'll go from 80 miles per hour to 85 now and jump to 104 and just intensify, come off of Cuba as a Cat 4. It is according to NOAA as a very strong system. Major hurricane by Thursday, Friday a Cat 1 and then a tropical storm to a tropical depression after that when you look with the euro the euro is saying that this will weaken down and be a cat one and not be a major hurricane there's different information in the models that's why i'm showing you everything i can find plus when you look at the wind gust the wind gust tells you that this is pretty much going to be not only a, a lot of major flooding because mostly tampa and in western florida they have such low-lying areas they can't take this much water at one time but all the wind is going to be in the gulf of mexico western florida is still showing you're going to feel some wind from this but it's not going to be the sustained winds that's going to be crazy numbers over 100 just really dangerous it's going to be the wind gusts that's going to be that high for y'all euro is showing it still can get up to 166 miles per hour wind gusts out here in the gulf now, GFS has changed its course to the eastern turn. It's starting to see that little bit of an eastern push, high pressure retracting back a little bit in the Atlantic Ocean, allowing it to go this direction. And it's showing it's not going to get that strong. It's showing it's going to get to 127 miles per hour wind gusts out here. But it's showing maybe some more impacts on western Florida than what Euro is showing. And then the strangest one of all, not only is a Euro seeing it, this thing is kind of coming off weak off of Cuba. 
High resolution rapid refresh is showing that it is going to come off pretty much a tropical storm that's going to strengthen back up to a hurricane and then weaken back down at the last second as it gets closer. So you can see when it comes off, it comes off at 50 miles per hour. That is a tropical storm. Strengthens up to a hurricane. They don't quite get to a Cat 2. A Cat 2 is 95. And then it starts weakening down, strengthening up, weakening down, just fighting that dry air and that cheer. Finally gets to 98 miles per hour by Wednesday morning. That's where it is showing it would be a Cat 3 major. HRRR is showing it will barely be a Cat 2. After that, we can ride back down to a Cat 1. But also agreeing that the wind gust is going to be the main fact. So it's not showing all the way on land. You can only see so far with HRRR. But so far, it's confirming just like the GFS that it's going to be 127 miles per hour wind gust so far. That is not going to be this big monster hurricane that's going to chop Florida in half. Now the latest update to 12Z on the year old does show that it comes off strong and it does produce a major hurricane all the way towards landfall, then it miles back down. So it stays strong, it gets a lot of winds aloft going one direction, winds below going another direction, and these two winds going at each other is what creates this stall effect that happens for a little while over by Tampa and Cedar Keys. It's a lot less than what it was this morning. It's not 24 to 36 hours anymore. So that's a good thing, but it's a little bit closer with the winds. Now, GFS is agreeing with that as well, saying it's going to be a major hurricane as it comes in. Then it turns a little bit sharper than what the Euro is showing. Still doing a little bit of a stall, still taking that northern path afterwards. So they're starting to come together they're all definitely agreeing it will be a major hurricane out there. So here's what we have so far on the wind gust. And so far it's going to miss Havana. It's going to get tropical storm conditions. All the serious hurricane winds is going to be to the west. So you can see how according to the Euro, it is starting to pick up to the 80s, even the 90s in that white. But once it goes toward Florida, and this is the next five days, guys, it has pushed even further west than what we saw this morning. So now it's showing that it will get into the 90s on the wind gust. St. Petersburg, Sarasota, Brightonton, Clearwater. But once it gets towards Tampa and on, that is going to be 70s and 60s and 50s and slowly drop off. Even the GFS that shows that eastern turn don't even show the amount of winds that Euro is showing. So I am seeing a lot of differences going on with the impacts and the intensity of the storm. Unfortunately, there's no way we're going to truly know until it comes off of Cuba for tomorrow. As soon as it comes off of Cuba, if it's a little more eastern, it's going to take that eastern turn. If it's a little more western, it's going to take that western turn. We won't know until this wobbles off of land and see exactly what strength this storm is going to be and what the track will be. Until then, nobody can know. Euro also is showing that the rainfall is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico, but it is confirming the wraparound on northern Florida, Jacksonville, that you will get a lot of the heavy rainfalls, anywhere from 8 to 9 and 10 inches right below you. But it's not showing the heaviness on western Florida no more. It is showing that it will be in the Gulf of Mexico, and the most for Cedar Keys, which is enough, is 10 inches. So it's getting less and less. It was showing a lot more this morning. I think it was 15 or 16. GFS shows it's going to curve right on in just like the old run of the Euro. It's showing all them high numbers that the Euro showed before, before the update. So it's a lot of mixed information on what is happening with this system. But like I said, we won't know the truth until it comes off of Cuba. Because I'm seeing a lot of potential weakening. Now I got this on high resolution rapid refresh so you can see for yourself that when it comes off of Cuba... It just does not hold a good center. It tries to, and it still holds good strength, but it's not holding it for rapid intensification. It's getting too much shear and too much dry air finally does get in there and just dissipates this system. So we'll see a little bit better in the morning when we know which way it goes after it hits Cuba, because that's going to make all the difference in the world, whether it comes off on the west side or the east side is going to make all the difference in the track. But I will update you early in the morning with the latest information that is out. It will be an updated video, a quick video, just so you can 
stay on top of what's new. So thank you so much for visiting my channel. God bless each one of you dealing with this situation, your family, your friends, including your enemies. Everyone that is dealing with this is going to be a big flooding issue and a big wind event for a lot of people as well. So I wish the best for every single one of you. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. God bless you all. Give you all wisdom on what you should do with yourself. Make sure that you use the links in the description so you know what's going on with your evacuation zones. May God watch over every single one of you. All glory does go to God <laughs> forever and ever. And I pray he watches over each one of you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watch over us, Father.